I decided, you know what, I've dabbled in indie games. I'm gonna give this one last shot. Let's just make a game. It felt like jumping to the deep end. I realized that making games is like a real thing that you can do. <laughs> it's just so, that's the word is liberating. We owned this project. We just want to make a fun game. You have an idea of what the vision of it looks like, but then it actually coming out the other side looking like that, it's pretty rare. I co-founded the studio with uh, two of my friends. We had uh, all worked at a company that did not end up turning out like you know any of us had hoped. So coming out of that experience, the three of us, we wanted to do something that felt a little bit more authentic to who we were and what we liked. Going into it, we knew that we had complementary skill sets. Having the, the kind of the core pillars of, of game design already there and having experience, we were able to cover a lot of bases. This is really the first time we've been able to pour so much of ourselves into the development of a game. I think I'm most proud of us being able to look at this game and know that we're hitting our own quality bar, especially for our first game. You think you know everything, and then at some point you go, oh wait, we didn't know how to do that part. Well, I guess we gotta figure it out. <laughs> the four of us who started the studio worked in AAA. I left to go start making indie games. So we took that opportunity to kind of use our old friend group and our old expertise to start up The Wandering Band. And it was the first time that all of us felt complete creative control. That was fun, it was a challenge, it was also scary at the beginning. On a AAA team, you have technical artists and a dozen animators. I think the biggest challenge for us was trying to learn new skills and new parts of the game development process without ever doing it before. But I wouldn't trade it away. I think it's uh, the creativity and the creative freedom is totally worth it. the retro games. These were our favorites. And we tried to combine a lot of different elements from different games and give it a unique touch. A shout out to our community. They helped us translate the demo. They helped us get out the words. The demo has been played over a million times. It's just great to get a community like that. They helped us make Corman what it is.
I had lived in Kyoto for a while where I'd gone to a cat cafe and it was such a surreal experience for me at the time. So we sat down and we prototyped Cat Cafe Manager. When you're petting a cat, I don't know what it is, like endorphins that are being released, like the, the good feeling that you get from that. We kind of wanted to put in the game. We live in a time that's like pretty stressful and out of control in a lot of ways. So for us, it's very important that you sort of get a cozy feeling when you get introduced to the game. Just making the cat cafe of your dreams. a really rural town. So is Tanner, the other lead developer on the game. We've been together for since middle school, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There's no companies, right? There's no video game companies in Little Rock or the state of Arkansas. So we decided to just be the first. <laughs> to the Rescue is where you play as somebody working in a dog shelter and taking on all the responsibilities that entails. People love dogs so much, but this is also about raising awareness, right? It's, it's both of those things. There's diseases that can appear in the shelter. It's dirty and adopters only want the cutest puppies and they don't want the old dogs. Essentially, I just want people to walk away with more knowledge about the things we're representing. We've gotten a lot of people that work in real shelters that are like, I'm glad that you're doing this because a lot of people don't realize how hard the work is and how thankless it is. So 20% of every dollar that Little Rock Games makes from this game is gonna be going to the Pet Finder Foundation. The game is about being hopeful that you can improve your community in some small way. I first started getting into games probably about seven or eight years old, tinkering around with game engines. I started putting games on the web, flash games and, and things like that. I always liked the idea of really silly deaths, characters getting blown to bits in like a cartoony way. It's usually an area of frustration, but when you can see your, your character's head just flying off and blood's going everywhere, it's like, <laughs> you just got nothing but humor there. Sure gonna feel bad in the morning. I come up with the idea of having like a Ninja Warrior slash Total Wipeout death competition. I was actually working two jobs at the same time as developing the game. I'd have all these fantastic ideas while I was there. You know, I'd be on the checkout just thinking about Slaughter League and by the time I get home, I'd just be like, ah. We ended up deciding that it would be best if I work full time on the game. This game, it sounds corny, but it's changed my life in that way. Whereas no other game had before. It's just flipped my life to where I want it to be. So to finally be able to do this as a job is just insane. I love it. This is definitely like a good, just relax, chill in the evening, play with buds, laugh at stupid stuff kind of game. This is sick. Yeah! What is that? Oh, Jesus! Wee! be an absolute show. I was pretty laid back in college. I did just fine, but uh, I worked on Dark Deity. I didn't work on my own work. <laughs> None of us have ever worked on games at all. So for the majority of development, we worked on it in the dorm, yeah. And we would sort of just sit in the dorm room, just like, you know, type of working away. Uh, I learned how to code for like a whole week. I just didn't leave my room, didn't eat, didn't <laughs> do anything. You know, where, where we're at, we're all 23. Two of us haven't even graduated college yet. To be at E3 is pretty exciting.
Maybe I should raise my rates. I have failed my people. Weakness has consequences. This would make for a fine tale. I've always thought that I would be good at making video games. My mom just sent me a picture of a drawing I did when I was like eight, titled My Own Game. I was diagnosed with Asperger's autism as a child, and I basically kind of just told myself, no, nah, there's no way I could be in management. But through therapy as a child and then continuing my own efforts, I overcame it. Now I'm doing my dream, doing something I thought I couldn't do. Through this process, I've really learned how valuable people are. There's 20 people on the team. I'm just one of them. And I'm hoping to convey some of that through the game's narrative. You have to have growth and you have to have progress. So for us with One Lonely Outpost, loneliness helps highlight the value of connection. It took us a long time to get here. We put a lot of hard work into it. Shipping games brings tough times, but we've also seen like success together. Success for us is defined as being able to continue to do this because we really love it. We want to be what we know and be the best at that. Making something that people enjoy. Uh -huh. 